Namaste. Welcome to Prana Stories. My name is Praveen. In my quest towards creating more awareness about Indic knowledge systems, I had enrolled myself into an online course called Introduction to Vedanta some two years ago, where I met Guruji S.N. Sudarshan. S.N. Sudarshan was a Chennai boy who was educated in a convent. He is very well versed in Bible and eventually in his young days he turned into atheism and later on he moved on to Canada for work purposes and on the verge of getting a permanent residence he rejected it and came back to India. He enrolled himself for 30 plus programs offered by Chinmaya International Foundation spending around 20,000 hours in learning Indic knowledge systems. He continues to learn and teach. He continues to research and teach. He is also a linguist and can speak five Indian languages along with English, of course. What is special about S.N. Sudarshan, sir? Typically, you may find teachers who teach uh, about dharma or yoga or anything very serious looking people feel that you may not be able to access them easily. But Essence Sudarshan sir is the quite the opposite. He is fun loving, he is jovial and very dynamic and he ensures that people enjoy enjoy these sessions. I am glad the conversation that I had with him in this in this podcast went the same way. Tune into this light-hearted podcast. Light-hearted when I say the topics are not light-hearted. The topics are very heavy duty. Please like, share, comment and subscribe and help Prana Stories reach as many people as possible. Thank you so much for supporting so far. Namaste. Namaste. Sarji. Sudarshan Sarji. Namaste Bravinji. Uh, what, a, what a pleasure. Welcome to Prana Stories. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much. I would like to introduce uh, Sudarshan sir as my first introduction to Vedanta teacher online which I started off as part of my uh, journey of knowing my own roots so that's where I on the uh, you know on an Instagram post or something the Vedanta school or the Patshala came in and the introduction to Vedanta course came in and that's how I came to know of Sudarshan sir. Uh, I'm so glad that you are in my studio and we are talking about uh, Indic Renaissance, Dharma, Vedanta, all these kind of stuff. I'm so excited about what we are going to talk. So welcome once again. It's a huge honor, Pravinji. I very, very uh, sincerely thank you for your very kind words. Uh, so, I, I mean, the, the thing is that um, when I look at, I mean, I, I know a little bit of your background. Uh, the similarity what I find is that you also work for a corporate and this this is a side, I, I wouldn't call it side hustle. It's like a passionate thing that you are doing uh, for the sake of dharma, the contribution towards dharma, the contribution towards the motherland, Bharata. That is something similar that I find. But obviously there is, a, there is leaps and bounds what you have already achieved there. So that, that so for me, the Prana stories is a is is a is, is your Prana. Yeah, it's kind of my Prana. Uh, it's like a renaissance into my own land. So I would the audience would certainly would like to know what is your story, what is your journey into this. Fantastic. So first off, thank you so much, Pravinji, for this uh, this uh, introduction. I'm really honored. And I'm really touched by the fact that you, you know, you introduced me to Sudarshan, sir, and then batch of Vedanta. Oh, wonderful. Okay, that's fantastic. Because it must have had some kind of an effect, something. It was just not one more online course that people attend and forget everything. And you know what? There has been some kind of a point zero 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 one percent which means the course has served its purpose. Definitely. Which is which is what I'm very, very happy about. And uh, second, you, you mentioned this beautifully. You, you said that something like this happened, you know, with you as well. I also have some information to tell you, Bravinji. It's happening for a lot of us. There are many of us. Mm. Okay, please let's let's remember this one thing. We are all like all the squirrels and all the birds and all that which contributed towards building the Ram Setu. Mm. Okay, uh, we know one thing for sure. This one person, we, your efforts are not going to be so drastic. What I mean, I'm not I'm not saying the bad sense. I'm saying the good sense. I'm saying that we are all inching towards the goal. So. One person's push is not going to put the whole boulder, but then you have thousand ants can actually roll over a whole boulder. Mm -hmm. That's basically what is happening with all of us. So mm -hmm. you are doing it. When I see documentaries made by Prana stories, I personally saw at least, I've seen at least like five to seven of them. So I've seen the one on um, Kathak, 
Mm. And I've seen the one by uh, and the, the Greek and Latin. See, these are the these Sanskrit. are the new memorable keywords. Yeah. That's what I remember. Uh, yeah. Those of them so vividly, yeah. and many others. So we're all doing our own humble parts, Pravinji. Yeah. So in that sense, the one thing that we are happy about is that we're all working towards the same goal. The, the whole goal is basically just knowledge. Mm. That is why this land is just called as. Veda Bhumi. Yeah. Veda Bhumi. You know, remember first day, first thing is like Veda means you know, vidyate anena savidyate. It means knowledge, and also talking about the the name of the, you know the ent- the referent entity Veda is themselves. Hmm. Veda Bhumi means no- land of knowledge. Hmm. This was our civilization. This is our civilization. Hmm. Do, do you remember that one thing? I just wanted to mention the one thing. Yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Crystal Skull, right? Hmm. Uh, when the whole thing happens and the spaceship just takes up. And he says there's another word for uh, you know gold. It means something else. Their thing was knowledge. That's mm. the civ- that's the civilization. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 spoke about Indian knowledge systems, right? This is what my interest is, and the Indian knowledge system itself is so vast. It's like a multi-ocean thing. Do you want to give the audience a little outline of? what is an indian knowledge system what does it, what do you mean by indian knowledge systems absolutely so indian knowledge uh, systems they they are called by different names people call it indology indian knowledge systems or bharatiya culture bharatiya jnana parampara jnana parampara you, you may call it anything yes but there is a sort of a basic structure to it right so what is that structure so first and foremost of course we have the the vedic structure the vedic ocean and there are other oceans as well other oceans of literature which may not necessarily even be vedic at the same time it's all water that's what veda says you know mm. you you are saying that there's an ocean here there's pacific ocean here atlantic ocean here mm. but what is there it's not like a line there mm. it's basically the same water mm. so that water that that vast body of uh, literature and uh, you know uh, revealed knowledge mm. presented in different formats in so as sutras one liners mm. aphorisms mm. we want a complex concept summed up in one line sure we have it ready mm. okay the vedas what is the summary of the four different vedas so who wrote these vedas as a basic question would, would that could come from you know beautiful for a naive audience or a or an audience who doesn't know anything about vedas what what are vedas this is a question that would come for even somebody who thinks they understand the vedas <laughs> and it's perfectly fine there is right. nothing wrong with that because it's something complex for us to understand yeah first off uh, this is i think this is becoming common knowledge or maybe uh, i'm 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 just focusing in a different direction vedas do not have an author mm. vedas are revealed knowledge yeah. and that's the reason why you know our rishis the maharishis they we say they have superhuman powers they are actually ultimately human beings as well which means we are capable of that so the when i say that everyone is in a session usually ask me so how do i receive the vedas hello hello wait <laughs> let's not go ahead and focus on receiving the vedas let's focus on you know understanding the vedas that have been already received revealed and all that stuff yeah. so first of all they've been revealed they were revealed to rishis in their trance states in their deepest states of nididhyasana hmm. we have the shravana manana nididhyasana hmm. shravana listen and then manana reflect contemplate nididhyasana meditate upon it hmm. so in their deepest inquiry they were revealed as they were revealed to them So yeah. Rishay Mantra Drashta Raha Na Tu Mantra Karta Raha. They did not actually. They didn't Karta Raha. They didn't write it. Mm. It was not created. It was actually revealed. Mm. Drashta. They were seers. So they saw these shapes and mantras and all that. And then they didn't even bother actually writing it down right away. Their emphasis was to pass it down, pass it down, pass it down. And that's why we have that. You know, we have the whole Guru Parampara lineage connected all of all across the whole of Bharat. Mm. So. a uh, long story short vedas are apaurishaya apaurishaya does not mean it's aliens wrote it down as some people might tell you know might tend to think apaurishaya means it's a not a product of human imagination it's not a product of human creation mm. a paurishaya mm. purush paurishaya it's a, a basically way of saying it's not that of a human being so can it be simplified and called for the modern audience as a cosmic download a uh, cosmic download sounds but i have even a simpler name for it mm. it's called mantra mantra mm. simply means potent energy form okay maranath thrayate iti mantra mm. so we we see that word being taken over by hollywood now that yeah, we yeah. see yeah. avatar oh. what's your mantra for success <laughs> wo mantra for success mantra hai yeah. and that mantra 
by literally you know you, you ask for a, you know how can cosmic download and all that yes all of them are you know cosmic ca- download cosmic causal forms primordial mm-hmm. energy vibrations mm-hmm. energy forms even though they're beyond that very simply we can just say potent energy forms which are mantras mm. because this is something pravinjit that we understand right from sixth standard physics mm. that the whole world the whole cosmos not even this world the whole cosmos is composed of some kind of vibration something that's going on oscillating all the time mm. isn't it mm. there is when we say the time space continuum mm. we see that as a continuum because any small this we've seen that in hollywood movies and many other places any small little rupture in that continuum what does that mean that means it's a fabric it's all just connected mm. so we're talking about such profound you know energy forms which have been given to us which have been revealed to uh, the rishis and the rishis were gracious and kind it was passed on it was passed on passed mm. on and there is this one uh, instance that i mentioned in the class all the time so it's eternal eternal okay so that means you should be technically resuming right now Mm. And the first thing that I tell them is like yes. Okay. As per the question, yes, it's actually possible. Okay. One second, I cannot give it to you in a six-day online class because there is no online class, there is no offline class for it. Yeah. That is requires a level of Ishvara Kripa, Atma Kripa, and Guru Kripa and, and, and Atma Kripa. Mm. So, in as per the ye the you know the Shastras, Pravin Ji, you need three Kripas, mm. three kinds of grace. Okay. Okay. first is ishwara kripa three kinds of blessings basically blessings you know blessings okay first you need the the blessings of ishwara mm. second is actually guru kripa mm. the guru's blessings actually the most important of you know the three blessings you know what that is mm. it's called as atma kripa mm. you have to bless yourself you have to be kind enough to yourself to pursue things in the right direction mm. so if you are looking elsewhere if i am looking elsewhere then we're not we're not even in sync at all right so the atma kripa is the most essential one okay and that's precisely what you know that's why we're not focusing on receiving the vedas here mm-hmm. first let's understand that and one instance that it's very popular nowadays is basically that of 1934 34 mm. the vedas were revealed as early as 1934 that's about 90 years ago okay and 90 years ago yes okay in padaivir near namakkal oh, okay Uh, the great bhagwan ramana maharishi i think all of us know ramana maharishi uh-huh. uh, the great uh, you know acharya who is who's like who am i question is as profound as it always is he had a uh, disciple called as uh, kavya kantha ganapati muni okay this kavya kantha ganapati muni has a had another disciple called as devarata okay so what do what do usual people do usual friends do when they hang out they go and sell chicken in the coffee shop chill out or not just have some food and all that what would such acharyas do they actually went inside the you know the caves and started meditating mm. maybe they must have had a discussion or something and then they basically got into the meditative state you mm. know that states mm. when this was happening all of a sudden devarata went into a trance okay he was not he was not communicable and uh, they, they mean they were not the kind of people who would go and basically you know uh, you know splash water and all that right yeah. he went into a kind of trance like something was going on he started muttering sounds mm. he started muttering things like this what is what is he muttering hmm. and then of course the great gavya kantha gadamati muni realized something is going on here what he did when there was no digital tracking system there was no you know voice recognition voice recording mechanism he actually noted down the mantras okay that that book that i'm talking about does hmm. that sound fascinating to you pravin ji yeah yeah so i'm sure for the audience as well it might sound fascinating it is available online anvaya bhashya okay chando darshana so you can call it the latest veda the latest veda as per the as per what we know of the recorded timeline of the world okay but you never know you never know when we say it's eternal that means it's timeless right mm. you never know it could be somebody basically somewhere sitting in the kedarnath mountains or somewhere in the we see all those whatsapp forwards and all that stuff right of, of rishis mm. you know sitting in the snow and all that mm. they really are rishis yeah yeah but I mean, that doesn't mean we are going to go you know go take a selfie with them or you know yeah. uh, we they get the whatsapp number because they are not interested in all that they are somewhere in there yeah. not having food and they don't they don't interested in anything yeah yeah you never know they may be receiving that <clears throat> they may be passing it along they may not be passing it along but we don't know okay so when you said uh, the energy this is the core energy that that was received right so does that mean so there is a primal energy somewhere else maybe call it god or something right it's like a universal something which is coming to you so does that mean if i have to learn the vedas i have to believe in god 
what the what the that's a beautiful question because it you 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 get got it right down to a one pointed question yeah and the answer to the question this question there are 11 answers to this question okay <laughs> <laughs> okay actually there are six answers of this to the same question so what we have uh, simple you have, can you simplify i, I will it? simplify it very very simple i first off we have bhartiya darshana mm. is about making sense of life okay okay making sense of life meaning that the first questions that there are three broad categories of questions that we have mm. when we you know when we awaken to consciousness first question is about the world around us as we see all that we see all that inanimate when i mean inanimate not na- that, nature yeah na- natural world around us mm. we see the the rivers so it's like oh beautiful okay and then we take a look at the people around us we we we, are, we come in you know blank and all that whatever it is depending of course as different as a child person, as, as we a come child, into the world. as a child is coming we have all that how with the jagat around and then you pause it where did all this come from hmm. where where is it made from so typically the answer that is given to you they would show a person in a calendar and say this is god hmm. okay this god created the world hmm. okay sure hmm. do your reverence that's what everybody that's what, would yeah, do that's what naturally everybody would do yeah. so in that sense that would actually be you know curtailed there mm. because you've said you found an answer mm. and questions goes further and further and a long story short we have two broad categories of bharatiya darshanas okay. indian philosophies okay so that's why i can when i give you an answer yes or no question it might be very 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 curtailed mm. so i'm giving you a slightly longer answer sure. but yet i would ensure that i i i exceed to the request of the one liner mm. one liner is simple though mm. so there are 11 different perspectives of the reality around us okay. reality meaning what jagat jeeva and third ishvara the physical realities physical subtle basically what we see around us okay is and whether the question there is that's also perspective is there a subtle reality behind yeah, this right. reality yeah yeah are you have you seen it if you seen it you that cannot be a subtle reality mm. isn't it yeah so we have all these questions coming up so we have the two broad categories of knowledge system which is we have category. astika mm. and nastika okay astika darshana and nastika darshana they differ in many things they are different perspectives asti asti mm. is Yes, it affirms. Mm. Affirms what? Affirms the authority of the Vedas. Mm. That's why it's asti. Asti. Okay. Nasti. Nasti. Okay. Na asti. Basically, no. Mm. I I I do not affirm that. I deny that. Mm. That is basically you have the uh, nasti ka darshanas. Mm-hmm. That so we have the three broad proper categories of uh, you know different perspectives. One is exists authority of the Ishvara, authority of uh, Vedas alone itself. Mm. you you say revel knowledge should be even you know mm. uh, should be even say accept that yeah trust that trust right. that right okay and then you have the acceptance of acceptance of uh, uh, atman mm. is there someone inside us is there something inside you or are you a part of the larger cosmos mm. or is there nothing mm. second so existence of the atma mm. commonly mis mis translated as a soul Mm. but the right word is self mm. that's why we use self realization self knowledge because soul is actually you know abrahamic concept right. it's not a dharmic concept mm. okay self is basically you mm. okay and uh, the third one nas ah nas nastika darshana and the third point is existence of ishvara okay is there a, is there a super, supreme being is mm. there someone who you know have supreme being because that raises even further questions mm. ad infinitum If you say X raised some X created the whole world, who mm. created X? Yeah, that is a natural question. You haven't answered the question. Correct. You just taken it one step further. Yeah. So these six, the sadarshanas or astika sadarshanas, nyaya, vaisheshika, sankhya, mimamsa, yoga, vedanta. Okay. So nyaya, vaisheshika, sankhya, mimamsa, one line, one word summaries. Nyaya, basically the, the logic department of Sanatana Dharma. Hmm. Vaisheshika. the physics department of sanatana dharma hmm. okay nyaya vaisheshika sankhya sankhya is a dualist thought hmm. uh, of dualism different from dvaita but that has influenced other schools of thought such as yoga and also even buddhism hmm. okay so sankhya mimamsa linguistics hmm. pure linguistics the, the most elaborate interpretation of all that so uh, elaborate interpretation of the vedas hmm. okay and all these six accept the authority of the vedas okay okay sankhya and uh, you know sankhya and mimamsa are interesting because they posit it both ways hmm. based on the same texts they hmm. say 
you know, there is a uh, I affirm an Ishwara, and there, there is no Ishwara. Mm. So they posit all that, and then you come to these four are subsumed into the larger fabric right now. You would typically not find somebody with an, like a documentation of saying I am a Vaisheshika, but yeah, yeah. You would yeah. typically, but what they would typically follow ninety nine percent when we say Hinduism, we mean a combination of yoga and Vedanta. Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, when I mean uh, and yoga and Vedanta subsumes. all native traditions of bharat this land mm. so it does not have to mean any spe- of any specific you know colors of any specific you know practices any specific agamas it subsumes all the native traditions not all native practices of bharat mm. Mm. okay of the civilization of bharat mm. wherever it is okay okay mm. and then you have the nastika darshanas but what okay let's let me just sum it up briefly okay nastika you have adnyana आजीविक चारवाक अज्ञान आई डोंट नो दे बेसिकली सेइंग या डूड आई रियली डोंट नो डोंट नो आई एम आई एम एग्नोस्टिक एंड इफ यू से देयर इज अ गॉड यू हैव टू प्रूव इट मी देयर इज अ गॉड करेक्ट एंड इफ यू से देयर इज अ गॉड आई विल से नो देयर इज नो गॉड सो दे आर स्केप्टिक्स जेन्युइन फ्री थिंकिंग लिबरल्स बाय द वे नॉट सेलेक्टिव विशिवाशी लिबरल्स आई वोंट हार्म नो एनिमल्स बट आई विल एक्चुअली ग्लैडली हैव यू नो व्हाटएवर मटन बिरयानी व्हाट मटन वाज बोर्न गोट वाज बोर्न टू कम इनटू द प्लेट और व्हाट ओके Mm. and uh, you know all the animals are getting harmed on diwali but they don't have you know smoking mm. so i'm not getting to all that yeah. but long story genuine free thinking liberal skepticism what they thought what they thought mm. ajivika mm. everything is fit sab kuch likha hua hai mm. you know that that so course is ongoing right now okay it's fascinating okay okay everything going on sab kuch we, we see that scene on zindagi na milegi dobara okay ritik yeah, roshan is saying sab kuch likha hua hai it's a simulation and we are just part of it no no sab kuch whatever it is if you think it's a simulation the thought itself is like likha hua hai likha hua okay we are sitting here i'm moving my hand wo likha hua hai mm-hmm. kon likha hua hai wo sab hum nahi jaan sakte okay that's what they, they're very clear about it okay okay char vaka all this is just fabrication mm. just go out there you know eat well drink well be happy Enjoy. have your sensory sensory pleasures mm. basically lead a thug life you know mm. thug life life in a way is unimaginable existential basically uh, ma- exist no ma- material material okay the only thing in the world is material wealth and material possessions mm. dude i mean you don't have to go undergo all this there is no realization all this is fabrication mm. okay all this is made up by uh, people mm. okay no no this it's is not a figment of imagination it's all a figment of every imagination mm. okay now and the more we talk about it i mentioned this in the class pravin ji mm. you see such a big rise of this yeah. because ajivika adnyana charvaka are actually officially dead when okay. i mean dead doesn't mean like they basically extinct mm. they no longer exist as large you know schools of thought mm. they just individual you know individual streams of uh, people mm. having those questions but i thought The attitude of charvaka is more in people these days. That's what the I mean. Material the, thing. Exactly, the pop culture is manifesting. You know mm, that, yeah, right? Yeah. You need to have certain things, and you need to have that, mm. dude. You know, you can't just uh, be like live like I want. I'm just going to just you know live in a very samanya dhoti. Yeah. I'm not saying the good way and the bad way, but that's what they said. The yeah. charvakas were true to their word. They basically mm. said, say, because it's very very easy being judgmental about all these different belief systems. Mm. I say that very clearly. they have absolute they have posited beautifully extremely elaborate reasons as to why mm. the other person is wrong and this person is right mm. they great acharyas okay. ajit kesakambli was also amazing he was he, he was he's written his uh, sutras and there is also a tattva upaplava simha mm. the the lion to uproot all philosophies that's mm. the name of the book okay okay and that is by uh, that is on about charvaka basically they're saying chilmadi Okay. 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 The so these two major schools of thought, which is which which. Aji vik adni ana. Kind of forming. No, I'm saying I'm a larger. Ha. Yes. Okay. Hmm. The ones that which follow Vedas as the authority, the ones who don't follow the Vedas as the authority, but this is part of a bigger umbrella, which is the bigger the umbrella. The whole thing is what is called a sanat. 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 Because okay. uh, I was just going to get to that in one second. Hmm. Embedded within the same nastik darshan as are actually. the two beautiful beautiful traditions of bharat which is buddhism and jainism mm. aren't we all proud of our own jain heritage yeah. we there is jainism there is my buddhism and all these questions are they're all a part of the living legacy mm. they are such beautiful beautiful part of our own family mm. they have different beliefs so what it's all a part of the same family yeah. and the beauty is this uh, one thing that i mentioned is vedanta is such it's considered the core nucleus there is a reason why because vedas came first 
all these roles either in opposition to them or, or as variations to them mm. so, but ultimately when you say you know i am against the vedas i am for the vedas what is common to both the statements mm. vedas vedas right okay yeah. or i say i completely reject it i'm going to start my own thing sure no problem but you are actually acting in reaction to a mm. central right. core nucleus Correct. that's why vedas are mm. forever and that's that's understandable that's happening but the the, the commonality is let me tell you what are what is fundamentally common between all these different views of dharma i mm. told you that they differ on three mm. but they agree on more than 8 or 10 or 12 principles mm. they disagree on equal number of principles there is there is disagreement even between sub schools of vedas yeah yeah right you have a you have a vishishta advaita vishishta advaita you know uh, advaita achintya bheda bheda mm. shuddha advaita and you have so many different you know uh, advaita advaita mm. have so many different mix interpretations of both, yeah. mix of both they there are multiple variations and permutations combinations mm. that there is a reason why sanatan dharma is this unifying umbrella mm. because all the civilizations that i'm talking about all these different sub uh, microcosms that i'm talking about pravin ji their focus is one thing and one thing alone mm. you know what that is you yeah. me the focus is this individual being mm. the focus is not a sky god the focus is not outside of outside of their existence they're only adding points interpretations for example nastika astika majority of them of the surviving of the nastika we have buddhism jainism mm. of the surviving of the you know not surviving subsumed we have yoga vedanta what do all of them agree upon they all agree upon karma Mm. there is a concept of karma in all these you know a uh, different darshanas perspectives yeah. because they are not different religions yeah. they become codified and solidified and rigidized rich, sorry uh, uh, a politicized and document there is a different religion mm. but even now the hindu marriage act actually says it it includes everybody who belongs to this and there may have been other you know variations mm. but quite simply it's the same perspective because they are raising the same questions mm. karma is the same mm. karma phala is the same mm. moksha what is different kinds of moksha of course they would say they what would different, different but they agree in the concept of moksha yeah there is liberation most importantly punar janma the defining trait of sanatana dharma mm. the defining if it, i mean of course i can name about seven or eight different things mm. but the defining trait punar janma because punar janma is that anchor on which even your moksha and your karma karma phala rests so you are basically talking about the four uh, purusharthas right purusharthas are the goals of life yeah one's so life this, which is common to both these schools that is also common purushartha is also common the dharma artha, dharma arth kama, kama moksha, moksha. and of course what is moksha is different for yeah, yeah. someone and all that stuff yeah. but ultimately this is a most important thing because the questions are the same hmm. the questions are the questions that you and i have been asking we have been asking since wherever we were the same questions come to somebody in argentina as well hmm. the same person some person born in alaska in anchorage could have the same questions hmm. these are human questions that is why it's sanatana dharma because this is eternal law eternal order it is not based on changing laws family law changes traffic law changes yeah this one way but not be a one way again yeah but this will not change because as long as this is the structure and this is the cosmos this is the reality that's why we have beautifully this thing uh, pravin ji this vedas applies to this manvantara hmm. the set of vedas that we have right now hmm. you know apaurshaya vedas compiled by vedavyasa maharishi into rig yajur sama dharva mm. embedded within rig yajur sama dharva you have four sections right mm. you have the samhita brahmana aranyaka upanishad mm. this is for this cyclical event in sick cosmos okay yeah but that, that by the way is an interesting story mm. which can even make a good nice you know uh, caption uh, sanatana dharma propagates a cyclical cosmos Hmm. Sanatana, it does not propagate, uh, you know, the other. There are so many of the different steady state theory. There is a you know Big Bang theory, mifting things. Hmm. We actually posit a. We have we posit that cyclical the cosmos. cycles. It it uh, it it keeps Cy- it keeps repeating. Circle. Yeah, it's beautifully beautifully uh, written in the Nasadiya Suktam of Rig Veda. Hmm. Imagine this: the earliest revealed knowledge has something that's named Nasadiya Suktam. Okay. and then it says there are three paramatmas the supreme being mm. you have i mean same paramatma in different forms mm. you have the sthiti kala paramatman mm. 
So Srishti Kala Paramatma, the creation time. Mm. And then you have the Stiti Kala Paramatma, the maintenance. And then the Pralaya Kala Paramatma. Mm. So this is a part of the earliest revealed knowledge. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So um, so then we, we, I mean, there are like we, we, we spoke about two different yes. schools of thought. under the uh, umbrella of sanatan dharma 11 different schools of thought Eleven under them under the two broad categories two broad categories which are under the one mothership of the sanatan dharma no so so the first question that i asked that should should someone believe in god to even uh, you know to believe in sanatan dharma right but that one, you one, already one, answered it yes i believe yes it's, you it's, can have those different perspectives yeah it's a system it's a system it's not a god made system it's a system for human life exactly. for me and you it's actually a system for cosmic well being yeah it's not a religion it is that's, not that's that's what i wanted to make a clear beautiful thank right? you i'm so happy that you brought it there religion is from the word religare yeah. when we see the words uh, right now delegate subjugate relegate mm. all these words that's the latin word mm. so religare is from 15th century and this is during the european renaissance time and all that stuff when there was a tussle between the the church and state and all that yeah. and that's where religion got codified mm. so this is so we are not we are not followers of religion because religion is basically my way or the highway mm-hmm. very simple yeah there is no you don't have a i just told you the 11 perspectives and i still still use the same term yeah there <laughs> no you you believe you, this otherwise you're out of the club yeah you better there is a book you either follow this or you don't follow this that's how it is you, you you do it my way or it's the highway, highway for you yeah so i mean depending on depending on various points of time in history if this if this is 1000 years ago it's basically you know okay sure no problem just die right now mm. but now it would be basically be like die in hell or burn in hell or something like that mm. because i'm not stating this okay i'm that's basically what the texts themselves say yeah but uh, here even the concept of swarga and you know naraga are actually there are temporary places of you know enjoyment or torture mm. that's considered just a loka it's mm. just a you could you could rationalize it and think of it as different manifestations or dimensions of the mind mm. or it could be thinking of actual lokas mm-hmm. okay so so okay, uh, that is a long story short about religion versus dharma mm. because this is a dharma this is a, a to to reduce it to something as simple as saying it's a way of life I would not even call yeah. it. Let's use the actual word dharma. It's dharma. That's dharma, it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I'm also. Uh, we're, we know we're not translating to yoga as like you know. Uh, you remember this, Pravinji? There was a joke sometime. Mm. Regulated breathing exercise. You know what that is? <laughs> what is that? Pranayama. Pranayama. This is the. Th- this was the name given to yeah. pranayama, yeah. and they said you, somebody wrote a paper on it. I think somebody was like, "Really? You mean pranayama? You mean the one that like more than a billion people do on a yeah. cultural basis?" Correct. Oh, wonderful! Thank you for giving it an English name. And yoga so let's also use has reduced. <laughs> uh, yoga has been reduced to only the physical exercises. Beautiful, but yes. that's not the case. right it's, it's long very simple summary when i say yoga everyone thinking of like yoga exercises or yeah. yoga mats and all that but the baat kya hai yoga is basically yoga darshana okay and you have like ashtanga yoga yeah. eight limb ashtanga yoga yeah. okay yama niyama pratyahara pranayama asana dharana dhyana samadhi mm. so all these are stages and i was mentioned this just about two days ago if someone is genuinely following these eight limbs of yoga maybe not to the 100% level even let's say to the 10 not 50% level i'm just giving random numbers okay i think that person would be a superhuman mm. i'm i'm serious yeah because i i obviously read through the text and i was like wait a second the kind of attention the kind of thing that you're talking about single pointedness of the mind chitta mm. ekagrata mm. tell me pravin ji if i am studying like single pointedly i don't have any distractions from whatsapp i don't have any you know notifications i don't have anything coming from anywhere if i study about it for like 8 hours would that basically amount to a few years and all that yeah they are <clears throat> saying you have the yama niyama list of don'ts list of do's don'ts does not mean the bad sense don't take they're not saying don't eat this don't eat that they say no if you do this your rajas will improve improve yeah. your recommendations your basically recommendations yes humble suggestions yeah yeah they cannot even put it in a more polite way yeah. they can they're not even saying you follow this or you know what you you know you're going to actually something is going to yeah. <laughs> we're going to mess with you so they're saying please do this yeah yeah if you don't this it's fine but uh, if you do this you'll get to become a superhuman yeah yeah so ashtanga yoga thanks for bringing that up mm. everybody's thinking of only yoga and when i see uh, a j- joke is this uh, you know uh, pravin ji i see all the people coming on uh, 
team calls and like cow pose camel pose and all that stuff like <laughs> you mean ushtrasana no? you mean like yeah okay yeah thank you you mean camel pose yeah sure yeah yeah <laughs> that's fine see we we've become tourists in our own land right. sadly yeah. we are we have become tourists in our own land mm, yeah okay now let me come back for this tourists who are watching this show <laughs> no no i would i would never condescend anyone and saying and i'm always saying we because i still i'm in some a way part of that yes and we are we are a part of the same system so let me please correct that one thing for the sake of the audience for all of us we are a part of the same fabric correct. of this uh, see think of it you know we could think, think of it vedantic way think of it as karma we are mm. all meant to coexist right. in this manvantara right. this yuga right. so that's like a likha hua hai so why i use the word because you brought the word of tourist because i it it is applicable to me myself uh because i was also a tourist in this in this part of the land and i was looking at our traditions our knowledge systems as like someone who is who is an outsider right because that's what uh maybe call it colonialism does to you right? master stroke of mass ma- ma- macolin master stroke master stroke that right? was the that's what broke the spine in 1835 right right basically everybody was just you know learning things the way that's where the beautiful great wonder works of uh, the beautiful tree by dharampal ji i'm sure you're aware of uh, mm-hmm. the audience would you know i think he's a very a very famous person mm-hmm. so he went to the british archives and wanted to write down what was the state of theek hai bhai you're saying all this what was this what was the condition there were 10000 patshalas in bihar and bengal alone mm-hmm. okay and the so called numbers that they were reading all the caste games there was no no the numbers were entirely different yeah. okay it was not brahman exclusive it is not a brahman exclusive school or brahman exclusive thing whatever it was everybody was doing their own everybody was living happily yeah. whatever it is okay i'm not trying to whitewash anything yeah. i'm just trying to talk about something that is written not by somebody recently but by actually the british archives themselves right they talk about all this dharampal ji okay beautiful tree and so uh, we had this education so you me i am a product of the education you are a product of that system yeah we are all trying to basically chunk away parts of the decolonial parts yeah not realizing that the system itself is actually based on the fabric correct yeah 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 so that's what i was coming to that i began my journey very pretty recently in terms of going back to my roots and then decolon decolonizing my own mind because i realized that for so many years that that colonized mind of uh sort of aping the west looking at the west uh, as the as the best thing they are the best in technology the greatest thing to ever happen <laughs> right uh <laughs> then very late in life i realized all this is just humbug right many things are right here in my backyard the indian knowledge system is right here if i just access it i can do a self study of that right it, i need not even belong to a school or belong to a family to do that if i if i if i have taken up it on myself to do a self study i'm sure you also must have done the same thing in your you, journey what what you have given here is basically a, you know a snapshot of what my life story is in like about four sentences because uh, i actually was in i was in canada i, I learned i went did masters degree i got my permanent residency as well okay and what uh, made you shift here see if i think in re- i can ni- now i can give you all the nice long lines that said okay yeah, i'm destined to be here yeah, bharatiya no bharatiya <laughs> called me ma bharat called me you know i was meant to be here my acharyas blessings are here okay let's be honest okay that's not the case i but there are having said that i also have to add this mm-hmm. there was something about bharat that was actually you know, calling me towards bharat mm, yeah and the simple things that we miss you know that we find as annoying here when you go there that's what you seeking a lot mm. I, i'll tell you i'll tell you something that, you know the the noises on the street sometimes sometimes i miss the noise on the street mm. if it's pin drop silence i'm like okay bhai koi to just somebody horn bajao yeah. at least it feel like we're in traffic mm. okay I, i'm just joking i'm not yeah. saying it gets annoying past a certain right, point right, right. okay simple things like the you know the the street side the, the samosa and the masala mm. masala vade mm. okay the bonda and the bhaji I, I'm, I'm like I said. I'm, I'm. You might do like, oh my God! You, know, you, you did. You know, this is the thing. No, you're missing the point. I was missing the whole culture, the cultural practices. I go out to an explosion of life when I go to a temple. Mm. I just have to drive down, you know, the drive down the highway from here to Nellur, and it's an explosion of life in all directions. There's mountains there, and there's a sea here. There's a waterfall there. It's like, wow! Mm. Why am I? Why am I doing this? And moreover, 
I come from that, you know, the that uh, generation or uh, call it maybe family or you know, community specific as well, where the programming was very simple and clear. Hmm. Do study well, write your GRE, TOEFL, go settle down there. Yeah, make money. Make money and and let me also tell you that is that is that is their pursuit. Nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Okay, that is nothing wrong with that because families and generations have been lifted out of poverty because of. many many people doing sacrifices by going to you mm. know different places mm. that has definitely happened mm. we cannot all say like why didn't all be in the bharatiya cause you know they left when the time and when it was not really cool and went to could to flaunt yourself as a bharatiya mm. and it's perfectly fine mm. okay and they are doing what they know the best so let us not get into the judgmental modes and think like that you know and everybody is included and of course we might have our own personal bones to pick with some of these people now that's a different story mm. but so that's the thing there is there was something about this culture that's what you beautifully said my own backyard i loved it loved it when you said that because i'm thinking yeah. wait a second my backyard was that my backyard was the the andhra pradesh tamil nadu border okay i explored it so extensively mm. so i i speak many languages we'll get to that a bit later sure but uh, the thing is uh, just blended and it was a part of the fabric there mm. and then and then that's that was one of the contributing things which led me to connect it now mm. and say oh my goodness this is what's happening everywhere Hmm. I was a well in a frog. I was looking at from one this one well, and but we don't see that we're all connected. Yeah, every body right from Kashmir to Kanya Kumari and Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh, we might have different practices. Hmm. But seriously, I'm honestly, we actually are connected in ways unimaginable. Right. right. Okay. It's like uh, the the they made this poll recently. I think they did some study or whatever. Hmm. Kichri was the most common dish across India. Hmm. Because there is one variant of kichri in every. They call it different. Pongal, mm. pongal is kichri. Yeah, sure, there might be some combinations, but mm. the fabric is one and the same. Yeah, I mean, uh, it it's it's so that I mean I've been reading about this decolonization uh, things, right? Because we are colonized so much, we always try to look at a particular society or a civilization as you need not have a homogeneous uh, anything. it can be plural right but the homogeneous structure that we have is what sanatana dharma is the the culture is right Ho- homogeneity is a word that sanatana dharma hates hates yeah basically because sanatana dharma says ultimate principle is this one to many is the principle of sanatana dharma correct because they try to brand it as non theism atheism yeah. monotheism polytheism nah. are by this is none of those terms nah, what is the term you used to describe it's polymorphism mm. that's a word one fundamental supreme consciousness yeah appearing in various names and forms which are an appearance on him and they're all impermanent yeah yeah okay, that projection that is maya shakti the creative you know uh, creative force of the world mm. isn't it mm. so brahman is basically what we are saying brahma satyam jagat mithya jeevo brahmai vanapara you are not different from that of mm. course i am espousing advaita vedanta's thought here mm. but what i'm trying to say is that it's one across in various names and forms right that is the one fundamental thought so uh, so this journey like i said i started like uh, being a tourist and now i am starting to travel within this knowledge system this is actual <laughs> you know i'm like being a tourist to actually traveling in it we, and like i said uh, when 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 you say tourist or when anyone here tourist we are let's agree that we are in some ways or the other at the same time the fact that we're breaking free of that mold yes, yeah. and actually becoming nirupadik yes we don't want to be tourists yeah. we want to be people who go to a place and find out and we should be the ones explain to the foreigners exactly. who come and visit us and like let me tell you about this yeah, yeah. i've done that several times uh, pravin ji right. i will tell you what i know based on what i know in english and you no know, combinations between these languages and they finally they give me money no i i don't want do it i don't i'm not yeah. I I, that's not what i'm here for right. i'm here to tell you and they're like very happy you know very happy you know very good ambassador thank you so much Correct. that's exactly what we want so what i was trying to say is that uh-huh. that is the journey of so called what what is happening today in in a larger context is the indicrinizens reawakening of the bharatiyata bharatiyata so how do you think that is going like is it is it is it rising or what what is happening there i think it's going well because you are also teaching uh, the indic knowledge systems to many people right online online courses yes. what what is the what is the kind of uptake that you have seen wonderful if i might just uh, you know for the sake of new audience if i might just give you a brief summary of the courses that i take hmm. so uh, i mean i i handle two primary courses 
one is introduction to uh, one is about the sanatan the introduction to sanatan dharma as a whole mm. things in context mm. okay i will tell you the goals and all that later okay so introduction to sanatan dharma and in that i focus on vedanta specifically the one that you enrolled mm. there is another course which talks veda or vedanta itself is in context of the larger uh, all in the indian philosophical systems mm. so these are the two topics that i handle mm. okay and uh, the goal of this course is very simple and straightforward so uh, it's to set context it give give a big picture introduction to what things are mm. that is why there's one thing very clear about introduction to and that word should never be taken away because the problem is this this is all the modern you know modern uh, learners yeah and i think uh, we all agree at different levels on different things and we're all a part of the same thing we all seek instant gratification mm. we want to go and join a course and we want to become the great the greatest experts mm. and that's not going to happen because this is meant for a specific purpose to provide a context and to set things in context to provide the big picture overview mm-hmm. of course for more information you can google for it and you know you can be more than welcome to read about the course and if you find it interesting you can take it up but these are the two broad categories of courses mm-hmm. that's what i'm doing and uh, i to come into a question of how that renaissance is going i think everybody is uh, we are do, we're all doing our own small parts mm. like uh, we were discussing we're all like uh, the squirrels that were bringing all the stones to uh, the ram setu mm. what okay. is your story of the renaissance that happened my story so my story to i i mean i w- i would want to get it get into it in a very very condensed manner across the whole timeline when did you start like how did you i mean from that uh, i mean whatever you have told me offline from that chennai guy who studied in a convent to becoming a vedanta teacher right now beautiful uh, right yes how did that happen in a brief way thank you thank you so much i'm going to condense it as much as possible just to ensure that it's uh, you know in in line with the larger goals of the podcast uh, so uh, i grew up in a uh, you know i grew up in a, i grew up in chennai mm. this is where I, i was raised okay and uh, i grew up in a family where i actually had two primary concerns there was a troubled childhood mm. i wouldn't want to get into the specifics of it sure. for the very simple reason that i don't want to make it either a sob story or i did something like oh so poor because one i don't like that person the second it may have been whatever it is but it's turned out in a different you know manner right now and all that stuff so i wouldn't want to get into the specifics sure so the ultimate story is that the two things that were prominent were that the shavanism ritualism hmm. you know i'm talking about it because we're learning with the of your own family of my of of the society and as well in a way hmm. because you're a young kid and you know you're a you're, you're asking questions about things happening around you hmm. you're trying to figure out why did you know that you no know, because all of us have this fundamental question right what we're doing is right hmm. why is is it not hap- why is it not happening exactly the way i want it hmm. is not a question that all humans have because that's fo- foundation of ichcha right yeah. you have priya modha pramodha the three levels of desire hmm. we seek something in the mind and we take efforts to we get it why hmm. is it not happening hmm. so the whole lot of things happening around we let me do the, the question and uh, the what the way that was done and I, i still see a prevalent thought a lot is that we have made god we have made this concept of supreme being into a you know like a like a, how do i put it like a supervisor or a some kind of a human being very humanized him mm. but the thing is this that what what has happened is in that humanism what they've done is we've infused ourselves into the idea of god mm. ourselves as in all that which does not constitute a nishwara or a god we are infusing like okay i say it says so oh, you know in that sense like okay you know what is right that mm. is what shavanism is right and then they also so much of antagonism towards even other sampradayas and perspectives mm. i mean i've heard that so much you know mm. because everybody has this absolute shavanism is that whatever be the thing i'm born into you know it is divinely blessed it's divinely you know provident you know providential i'm born and this is the greatest thing in the world and everybody else is an idiot and everybody else is basically wrong mm. in, i'm talking about the the hardcore Okay. So I'm talking about that level of hardcore is where I was. Born. I'm actually I was born into. Okay. Okay. Hardcore in the sense hardcore not in their actions but hardcore in their ideas which were broadcasted wrongly. Mm. So this basically led me to that natural quest of that you know of that exploration. But this is not this doesn't it's not working for me. Mm. Okay. And that's and that's this kind of led me towards uh, of course three. Uh, foundational teachers which I which I would who I always acknowledge and I'm ever thankful for them. 
ओके भगवान ओशो रजनीश ओके ऑलवेज एड्रेस इम इज भगवान ओशो रजनीश ही इज इज अ फैसिनेटिंग थिंकर एंड देन जिड्डू कृष्ण मूर्ति ओके बेसिकली ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ देम इन पैरल ओके एंड ऑल्सो उपलूरी गोपाल कृष्ण मूर्ति यू जी कृष्ण मूर्ति दे नॉट रिलेटेड बट हीज अनादर हीज नॉट अनादर Uh, no, a different rebel way of thinking. Mm. So they have been founding you know, very influential, but since a very young age, you know, all these influences of Hershey, Tintin comics, mm. Tintin comics, mind blowing. Mm. One of those things, you know, that that explores you to the world outside of yourself. Mm. Oh, so despite my circumstances, I've done my best to break free of that <laughs> well and mm. look out. Mm. So get into that. So that kind of led me to this whole questioning, skepticism, and all that stuff. and when when you raise questions to hardcore or somebody doesn't understand it typically becomes uh, an aboring sin mm. okay so i'm like i don't i don't care and so i i was very much into pure atheism okay it's like there cannot be a higher god because uh, i needless to say i've done my i did my research <coughs> based on all their or their works as well bertrand russell to uh, you know uh, everyone um, whoever is you know richard dawkins mm. christopher steno hitchens all of them mm. and then beautiful fantastic it's beautiful and then of course that kind of leads you to become like nothing just go ahead you know chill out enjoy all that stuff mm. and then you you become a little partial shark back in which we already are in some ways or the other we are we seek a little bit more comfort than usual mm. okay in some ways or the other mm. so and then that kind of leads you to this awakening of uh, i i did into now to get to the point i did the shambhavi mahamudra program okay. uh, of uh, you know indian engineering program okay by uh, sadguru okay. uh, in pune so i think it had a very profound effect i have to very very clearly say that it has it had that explosive effect mm. explosive effect of something that has been compounding for years together mm. okay and so you know that kind of led me to a little bit of th- seeing things around me in a different perspective mm. okay and then i was i was am i i shift my work was between dehu and alandi okay two of the nerve centers of maharashtrian varkari sampradaya civilization okay mm. okay so i'm basically between nyanoba and tukaram okay sant nyaneshwar maharaj is alandi and uh, you know uh, tukaram is maharaj is uh, sant tukaram maharaj is dehu mm. my work my, my where i live is basically right in between them okay and so it's hard to two, two energy centers you can say beautiful yes to energy said they actually are energy centers actually nyaneshwar maharaj sanjeevan samadhi mm. where they he is actually still there mm. there is an energy circle they even tested that mm. okay and the santukaram maharaj he had you know went on a pushpak vimana but we don't get into the details mm. so that's where i am so it is hard to no it's hard to miss the culture and the vibrance and radiance when you are in you know pcmc you know pune yeah. and area maharashtra specifically mm. because it's very very beautiful very vocal and all mm. that so that had a very nice positive influence and in finding a little bit more about ultimately the answer just one question who am i mm. nothing else mm. okay the question we've all been asking for years together but something has to be convincing enough to us and uh, that's where uh, a few things happened one thing led to another and uh, we wrote these two books i worked with my maharaj uh hari bhakti varan subhash maharaj gate mm. and we authored you these two books oh yeah oh, this way okay yeah So these two books, one is Pasaida, uh, the Universal Prayer of uh, and Biography of Saint Sri Nyaneshwar Maharaj, mm. and the uh, Changdev Pasishti, the Philosophy of uh, Nyaneshwar, Nyaneshwar Maharaj. Okay. To give you a long story short of these two books, this is a summary of Shrimad Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. This is a summary of the Upanishads. Okay. Okay. So a summary of the Upanishads in sixty-five lines is Changdev Pasishti. Okay. Pasishti means sixty-five Marathi. Mm. So Changdev is a yogi, Maha yogi. Mm. Okay, and. Uh, You know the, 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 that conversation, sixty-five verses, mm. is Changde Pasasti. Mm-hmm. So we are still working on three, four more books. Mm. So first, I had to understand, had to start, you know, learning Marathi. Mm. So by the time I was in there, I, I did not speak much Marathi, or maybe I knew a few words, just as sentences, when I set foot in Mar, you know, Marathi. Mm. Okay, but Mar, sorry, when I set foot in uh, uh, Pune, but uh, now I speak functionally well, very well. Nice. Okay. So uh, what 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 I'm trying to say is that that happened. language and to understand all this document all this yeah. that's it that set in line right and then uh, you know happened this whole idea of this is one pocket this is one pradesh there is one that i'm already from what is it i you know i should need to learn more about them the actual you know for the formal way yeah. not not based on you know my my childhood you know impressions and scars from Correct. people yeah. who's actually said they're from that right right okay yeah Yeah, I keep saying that as a joke. No, they should be happy that we haven't converted to something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, so that's the thing, and that led to that. And finally, uh, I got to understand one thing: 
there is one thing i know you know i can i can do well that i have been doing you know, at work as well which has been teaching mm. okay and one thing is i actually learn well yeah. i've documented everything that i've learned mm. so what would i naturally have the correlation to i can learn i can teach, teach. can learn yeah, i can teach, teach. wait yeah. a second yeah. that is the one, the one one thing i'm going to be doing mm. i'm going to be doing this the rest of my life so this is i found my passion yeah you found your purpose of your life beautiful thank you i'm so happy that uh, you know you use the word purpose yeah so because i know that the civilization is a clockwork mechanism yeah. running in mathematical precision yeah there are some things happening here which we might not like there are some things happening here which we might not like but remember the one one thing we are all a part of that larger cogwheel mechanism mm. so you uh, there you know there, there there's a thing in uh, tamil that we say udaviyala na kuda paravalle upadrama irukada even if you're not actually going to be helpful and contribute that, even if you don't do that it's okay yeah. but at least don't be an obstacle to it mm. so the first thing to do is remove yourself as an obstacle right. second see what you can do to contribute to the larger cause correct so pravin ji uh, the very very simple one question that has led me to whatever it is that i'm doing right now and uh, led me to my the purpose of my personal life uh, is quite simply the ask question like you know what are, what are you going to do about it mm. we see a lot of things happening around us yeah are we happy with everything going on around us no never okay there are border scuffles happening between uh, you know our jawans and you know the arunachal pradesh doklam sector and ladakh sector yeah. i have a simple and straightforward question to myself here mm. can i go and do something about it no they will not even take me in yeah okay i cannot stand there for like even maybe one hour yeah. okay the best thing i would do is i would go there take like at least 100 pictures mm-hmm. and basically just may tag myself and say hey look cool i went to you know dokla and i would take a few photos yeah. i mean i'm being honest here correct yeah okay i would go there as an exploratory trip and understand that but next thing i would say is like please when is the flight back mm-hmm. yeah. they live there and protect our land there yeah so they do what they can do yeah but i can also do something from my side yeah. you know what i can do the only thing i can do with all my senses with all my you know with all the pancha karmendriyani pancha gnanendriyani and pancha prana the five all the organs of knowledge five organs of action hmm. pancha prana and then the manas chitta buddhi ahankara yeah the only thing i can do is this yeah so the, i mean the, i've been reading the book and and the only thing i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt no you the only thing i don't mean to say that in the bad sense because knowledge is in my opinion that which actually sets in for you know sets in you know motion the whole sequence of events that change history correct yeah that, that's what i was coming to i i was i'm reading the book called kshatra right there you go uh the physical kshatra is what the soldiers do but what you're doing is an intellectual kshatra any protection of any kind of territory or anything always needed a combination of a brahmana and a kshatra then only that place was protected well for example chanakya and uh, chandragupta or chanakya and ashoka not not ashoka chanakya and chandragupta they they built the mauryan empire what and, what is that empire centered around they centered yeah. around some kind of you know knowledge yeah that this system the, the the system of the kshatra and the brahmana the brahmana using the wisdom and the knowledge and the kshatra kind of you know with the valor and with the, the with with protection of its subjects right so this is what the success of a particular land or a country or a civilization is so like you said we are all contributing in in some way or the exactly. other exactly we we're, we're all a part of that cogwheel and the only thing that we can do is basically add to that grease it well because like you beautifully said uh, you said you compared that with the the kshatra what is the purpose of uh, i know a warrior to protect you know their motherland what is the goal of a learning session yeah i say that explicitly in every session the goal is to make you better conversant about dharma yeah the goal of this program yeah. is to make you better conversant about dharma yeah i'll give you one classic example just to set the you know set the context people usually have this correlation that there is something called as vedas there is something called as vedanta and there is something called as upanishads so they say oh you're reading uh, this uh, you're reading like actually they're all the same mm. i just answered a question that many people i'm i'm just saying you know that person who's being asked this question would be able to answer a question to empower the minds to empower the minds with what nothing 
we are not cre- i mean when i'm talking about myself i'm not creating any to anything new and that's why i like to think of myself and the thing that i do as a string yeah and that's the whole nature of indian knowledge systems itself everything is present in the sutra format yeah. so in that sense what i'm trying to do what we you know that the sutra is basically connecting the dots connecting the narrative and presenting a narrative and presenting a narrative at the risk of it should not be my narrative it should mm. be it should not be what i envision it should not be something what i personally see everyone has a different vision for a bharat yeah but if i am imposing my vision no that's not the thing this mm. is what it is yeah and that's why the three things that are foundational foundational the courses uh, pravin ji one it will be introductory nature second there will never be should you should do your list of do's and don'ts yeah. and all that stuff okay and the third is that every all the things that would be given to you the toolkit has been given to you yeah you want reference to find out where it's from no problem just click on it and just read, read further it. yeah okay and it's amazing so, it's amazing so i mean in the mid middle of so many politics that that goes around uh, between north and south between separatism we are separate we are we are tamil we are kannada we are malayalam all these you know prakrit languages fighting among themselves that we want separatism and basically north and south divide basically politics yeah, yeah. politicians doing that here's one chennai guy who was born in a orthodox i can use the word brahmin family <laughs> and right he went into a, he no, went right, into no right right now i validated myself because i am a brahman by profession as well and i am a brahman by birth but i'm, but I'm not just a brahman as per the varna i am i am that's what i do yeah. I, the only thing i know is how to teach correct exactly yeah. that's what <laughs> that's what brahmins used to do right so a chennai uh, a chennai boy raised in a brahmin family who didn't like the shamanism that the family displayed or the community display no, no, no. see i so i'm sorry sorry no 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 these okay. are big words i wouldn't use the word shamanism the you know individuals displayed because individuals, be, yeah, individuals. Not community not, no no i'm not getting to any of those sure, sure, yeah. things because that's not the case yeah. i'm talking about my personal sure. exposure to that and that's what i'm talking about i am not raising a political debate or i'm not <laughs> raising questions about community because i'm explicitly making sure it's not that the way those the, conditions shape me into a developing kind of a distaste towards a whole lot of things that's yeah. the point here yeah. it has nothing to do with the community's perspective no, no, or no. even the larger society because that's not the that's not the I mean, that, that's not where my world was my world was still my world right yeah 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 we yeah. say there's a war going on in serbia but i mean uh, ukraine Correct. like sure really that's your world too but it's not really part of my world is it right right that's way yeah so the individual chauvinism or the egos that were sort of displayed asked raised you to ask questions and the rejection that, that, of what whatever it is they thought they stood for correct and that quest led you to so many kind of gurus and then you have been doing that self study uh, in many different ways from different gurus from different uh, uh, you know knowledge seekers or the or the seers themselves and then you went into canada you rejected uh, staying there and then came back to pune and then you learned marathi marathi so you yourself are a proponent of so many languages english kannada hindi telugu tamil and marathi right that itself is an example that it's 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 actually sanatana dharma in in working right you, you know so many prakrit languages there is no difference between uh, i mean it's so helpful to know all the languages because you will be a better seeker you 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 can access so many other knowledge what what you said is fantastic beautiful right because there are two things uh, that i i see that one is language is the window to our civilization exactly yeah okay we even now even now we are still making a mistake of viewing actually vedas or even indian knowledge systems through the lens of uh, you know english yeah because sadly whatever we are shortcomings that is what we are trying to access it through yeah yeah okay yeah. even uh, when there are courses we would like to actually have it in language we know mm. if it's if it's strictly one or two let it be better be english and we still accessing through that but the words that we use in our conversation is dripping with civilization already correct yeah yeah so no? yeah. when you when you speak in your language think of how much it is dripping you know with uh, yeah. your own civilization isn't yeah. it yeah yeah so because what, why i'm saying is online if you go uh, on the social media there is so much of animosity going between languages between the north indian hindi between tamil between sanskrit you are 
your sanskrit is come from aryans again i don't want to go into that history kind of a thing no no no, no. <laughs> that's, that's you know that that's that's fine. okay first of i have to can go count this right away this aryan invasion nonsense <laughs> aryan invasion theory nonsense is 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 absolute classified you know you know garbage yeah, yeah. okay let me say that out out in your show here yeah. okay it's classified garbage that's no it is even, proved no we even traced out and found out what the mischief was and yeah, all that stuff yeah. so it is proved with evidence there is nothing but i'm all i'm saying is the mindset of the people and the kind of narratives that are the floated in in terms of separatism and yeah. you know all that things right that is what i'm saying to, that to address that point of view you said all these things all these diversity right mm. all this you know separatism to linguistics language and all that mm. that itself is basically what has led me to you know this path that we're talking about yeah, yeah. because this line is the, imagine this pravinji i walk into the upanishads class and not not online here yeah, isn't the first thing it says is this parikshaya lokan karma chitan i will explain that in just a few minutes sure this is beautifully in the mundaka upanishad parikshay lokan karma chitan brahmano nirveda maya nastya krita krtena tad vignanartham gurumeva bhi gachet samita pani stotriyam brahmanishtam mm. so i'm going to not explain the rest of it but the first parikshay lokan mm. we have to see the world mm. we have to see the world and live through that and there are these are things which lead us to different paths mm. isn't it so one has to see the world one cannot one is not raised in a private island one is not raised in some small kind of a, you know microcosm we are a part of a larger fabric mm. we miss out all of it because we're judgmental about this everything that we want that we see around us mm. so the first thing to drop is that judgment and have that curiosity yeah. when i when i mean find out i'm not i'm not talking about doing anything alarming or something like that just just see the world around you it's important to understand have you know have different kinds of friends have different kinds of opinions yeah all kinds of things you know yeah. let's let's understand very clearly yeah be open to be open yeah. not judgmental correct yeah okay you can have your perspectives you can have your vision but that's fine yeah yeah no no the, i wanted to highlight your amazing story being from chennai and bringing from a uh, that that kind of a family to being open to Uh, go out work and then uh, uh, chucking that and coming back and settling in pune and adopting a different or learning a different language and getting inspired by a different tradition altogether that workari tradition right so it's if you are open to such such things you you will be bettering yourself not not just be in the narratives of politics that's the story that yes, i wanted yes, to highlight yes yes you're absolutely right sir you're right see to basically look away from the, all that noise yeah. is the point yeah and to answer that you know beautiful point that you said i see it see we see everything is in retrospect and we see, see the connection right yeah we cannot steve jobs says that beautifully you can mm. only see things in retrospect yeah. you cannot we cannot see the future but we can see the respect in retrospect and see how they connected correct and the, the only thing that i see all throughout is my mother's blessing mm. my mother you know my, my mother passed away when i was very young mm. okay and my mother's name is kachikadambi jayshri uh, allund jayshri chari mm. and uh, back in the day she was a celebrity, celebrity okay singer. you know a singer yeah. when there was no social media there was no whatsapp mm. people would come to her concerts just to listen to her mm. okay so you know they actually and you know what what would they, they typically do okay jaisi please come and sing to our temple okay yeah. yeah please come over because i know you you know you, we want people just come over okay yeah. and my mother would like okay she's go sing there and then and she would go and go sing in the different houses and she was a celebrity she was a social celebrity that yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah. so in that way i'm very happy that she's given me that blessing and the larger blessing in the music and the languages because mm-hmm. music is what she's passed down to me mm-hmm. i I've, i've also formally learned for about 18 to 20 years. years okay i still i'm a performing artist okay okay i mean just that i'm not putting up shorts and all that and you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah, whatever it is you, do uh, you still do your practice i i'm doing my sadhaka you know my riyas on from my side okay. but i'm not i'm not i'm not posting them of course there are some you know just clippings of no songs that are performed on okay. the portion my channel okay. not like promoting it for its purpose or something like okay, that okay. i do sing in my you know classes as well nice right nice so that's something that uh, so yeah that's that's a wonderful point that you made that that whole uh, transition, transition has been made possible in retrospect and in larger vision and the way i would say it is my mother's blessings okay i could say all the things that i've been through that pariksha lokan mm. lokan you know you have to actually see Yeah. Pariksha, we say iksha means eyes. Yeah. Right. You have to see them with your eyes, and then those things lead you to something. Pariksha, but you have to see all that, and you know, 
be that better non-judgmental person. Yeah. And do, we don't. I, I still haven't gotten to the point where I judgmentally say I'm from this perspective at all. I, I mean, I do my best to be non-judgmental. Okay, and basically have that quest, that seeking alive always. Okay. Okay. I think that's what makes all of us uh, Bharatiyas. Yeah. We are not. Nobody will come and tell us like you know what do this. Yeah. What the first thing we do. Like I, I remember this beautiful scene in Khichdi. Yeah. Because if Bhagwan Sri Krishna comes down to the Parikh family, he gives them laddu. Mm. He was like, uh, "Aap kahan ho?" Like, and Bhagwan Sri, "Main Bhagwan Sri Krishna hu." Mm. Aapko, you know, laddu dene aaya hu. Oh, aap Sri Krishna ho. What proof do you have? Mm. That's our civilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if the somebody comes down, we like, "Kono be?" Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's because that's the way we are built. You know, yeah, yeah. we're not meant to basically say, "Oh, really?" Okay, because it has everybody coming and saying that, Correct. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and so in that sense, uh, that's the way it's shaped. So we are of that kind, and I think that, and the one thing I'm doing right to keep that alive is swadhyay, mm. which is I think I want to emphasize, you know, through uh, you know your uh, you know already ongoing things, which what you're doing is also swadhyay. Yeah, yeah. Right. What you're doing is you're documenting the temples of Kerala. You're documenting the cultural treasures of Kerala. Yeah. You're discussing with different people, and that is swadhyay. Yeah. Swadhyay is self-study. Study. Quite simply, that. Correct. Okay. And the yeah. different tools we use to disseminate, they will keep changing. Yeah. Okay. Your Microsoft Teams <sighs> will change. It'll update itself. You know, you would have YouTube. You'd have WhatsApp. Would have plugins. We might be able to holograms. But what is being made, what is being created here, is the what is being understood here. Because I'm sure, Pravinji, you you would un, I mean acknowledge this right away. We are actually 99 percent learners first. Yeah. We are not doing, you know, we're just disseminating whatever we can in our own humble way. Correct. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. We'll finish this segment here, and then maybe <clears throat> record maybe another segment where you can talk about how to live the life of a True Bharatiya, like what all small things can you do in your humble, humble baby steps, baby steps without you, offending anyone's, anyone's right. ego or without yeah. offending anyone's. We can, we can cover that in the next yeah, segment. Yeah. So we'll we'll probably stop here. Thank you so much, and uh, we will you know continue in the next segment. Thank Haniwa, you so Thank you so much.